there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. Today is the reveal of Tim Holtz's brand new Distress watercolor pencils. And I am fortunate enough that Tim Holtz and Simon Says Stamp sent me a set of these watercolor pencils so that I could share inspiration with you upon the reveal. So I'm very, very honored and excited that I can share this project with you today. If you're interested in picking up these watercolor pencils, definitely check out simonsystamp.com because that's where you can get these watercolor pencils and they're also a one-stop shop for all things crafting related. So I'm gonna be using not only the Distressed Watercolor Pencils but also products from Simon Says Stamp's new Stamp Timber release. So this is a really fun collaboration project that I created here. So I'm gonna show you first the pencils. Now Tim Holtz has a live that's showcasing these pencils in their full glory and it's definitely worth checking out. I'm gonna to link to it in the top right corner because he's gonna go in depth on these pencils and really tell you the ins and outs of them and how best to use them, all that kind of stuff. So I have two of the Distress Watercolor Pencil Sets and I wanna show you my favorite sharpener to actually use with these. Now I have the brass version of this sharpener but my favorite pencil sharpener for these Distress Watercolor Pencils is the sharpener created by the company Kum, K-U-M. And this sharpener is fantastic because it has a hole that's large enough for the diameter of these pencils and it will sharpen it to a really fine point. So I like using that particular sharpener for these pencils when I'm coloring and I really find that they sharpen to a very fine point considering the fact that these are a woodless pencil. And that's what makes them so unique. So I'm gonna start my project by taking some distressed watercolor cardstock and the new Pepperberry embossing folder and coordinating die set from Simon's and Stamps Stim Timber release. I'm gonna mist the watercolor paper from Tim Holtz with a bit of water just to get the paper a little bit more softened. So that way when I run this through my embossing folder, it's not gonna crack. So I'm gonna put this inside of the embossing folder and depending on what machine you have, just follow the sandwiches that are required for a 3D embossing folder. Once I've embossed the design, then I'm gonna take my watercolor pencils. I'm gonna start scribbling onto this paper and just mixing colors around. You do not need to be an expert watercolorist for this technique. This is something anybody can do. I know I often show a lot of detail watercoloring projects and I thought I would mix things up a bit and show something a little bit more loose and something that requires a lot less tedious coloring. So here I'm basically just scribbling a bunch of color across this background and of course I'm using the deboss side of the folder. So the design is pressed into this watercolor paper. So we're basically coloring on the raised paper, not the raised design, if that makes any sense. So now I'm gonna take some water and a brush and just start blending these colors out. Now, because I have so many colors on this paper and I don't want them to blend completely into one big muddy mess, I am cleaning my brush in between. So that way I maintain that nice contrast between the colors that I have across this paper. Because if I were to mix everything all together, it would totally look like mud and it wouldn't look very pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and color this, let it dry, and then I'm gonna bring in some Distress Mica Stain. Now I really liked how the mica stain layered on top of the watercolor pencils. So I'm taking that spray stain in both the burning ember and the decayed colors. Oh my goodness, these splatters dried back so beautifully. Once they were fully dry, it just looks spectacular. Now because this is a Tim Holtz inspired project, I did wanna distress things a little bit, but I didn't wanna get grungy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and just tear off the edges of the paper. I wanna make this paper be a little bit smaller than a regular A2 size card, and I'm just randomly tearing it around all four sides. So nothing's even, nothing's perfect, but it adds that nice distressed element without adding any grunge. I'm not always a grungy person, but I do like to dabble in it here and there. But for this particular project, I wanted to stay more on the clean side. Now, meanwhile, what you're watching me do here is I'm taking some glossy accents and some of that pepperberry dye, this is a, the coordinating dye, I dye cut it from vellum, covered it with glossy accents, and then added mica flakes over top. So I'm getting these beautiful crystal encrusted vellum pieces that look absolutely stunning. They need to dry, so what I'm gonna do is meanwhile take a piece of burnt orange cardstock from Simon's Stamp and one of the new Circle Greetings sentiments 
from Simon Stamp Timber Release. This beautiful Thanksgiving greeting was going to be perfect for this card. I really wanted to create a fall inspired card and I really liked the fact of adding the Thanksgiving greeting to this would be not only just a perfect greeting on in of itself, but the style of the script was very elegant and matched really well with the colors that I had going on in my card. Just the whole thing was working together perfectly. Now there are coordinating dies which I will use to cut out the Thanksgiving greeting. And now we're ready to move on back over to those pepperberry die cuts. So what I did was I stuck them inside of my splatter box and I'm just spritzing them with the mica stain, the burning ember color only. So now I get these splatters on top of the vellum and the mica flakes and it's just a really nice mix. So I didn't color all of them that way but I did color a couple of them with those burning ember mica stain sprays and that gave me a nice variation between the plain vellum mica flaked covered die cuts versus the ones that have a little bit of color on them. I really liked how that matched up with the greeting and the rest of the background. So I'm going to hold those leaf pieces down with some foam tape that's on the back of my greeting. That was just enough foam tape to hold everything in place. So now the leaves can float almost on top of the background, but they're anchored down underneath the sentiment. So everything's going to stay in place, but they still have a little bit of movement. I'm going to pop my entire panel on top of my ivory card base. This is a Simon's stamp cardstock that's perfect for something a little bit more on the neutral side. It's not quite bright white, it has that softer feel, but it's not cream either. It's a nice perfect color. I felt my card needed one more little accent. So what I did was I took a bit of twine and I kind of made a bunch of loops around my fingers and then taking the two ends, I wrapped them around the middle portion of those loops to basically anchor into the center and tie a knot to form a bunch of loops into a bow. This was a really easy way to make a multi-looped bow and I love how this multi-looped bow looks on top of my card. So once I finished tying this up, I just used a bit of Simon's Stamp Craft Tacky Glue to put that along the bottom portion of my card and there we have it. That finishes off this watercolored background that I created with not only the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor pencils, but also Simon Says Stamp's new Stamp Timber release. So I hope you are inspired by this project. I hope you enjoy getting to see these colored pencils used in a technique that was not quite so color centric, but more of a background technique, which is a really fun way to approach something like this medium. You don't have to feel intimidated to the fact of the fact that these are pencils that you have to actually color something with them. So by doing backgrounds, you can feel a little bit more free with your coloring and you don't have to stress as much about making the coloring perfect. This background technique is very forgiving so you can play around, mix colors up and see what you get. I think it would be a lot of fun for you to practice and try out some color mixing and see what you can come up with. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the products that I use today, definitely check out the video description below. I have all the details there or over on my blog if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. I will see you again very soon. But until then, I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.